Hi, my name is Mess Barnkop from Kaiser Power Electronics. Today I would like to talk a little bit about fuses and what are fuses? Are they just a piece of metal that can blow up at a certain current? Um, we'll talk a little bit about uh, especially this, which is a 300 amp uh, fuse, and then this one, which is a 200 amp fuse. So why is there such a big difference uh, in these, despite this is a, has a higher rating? We'll talk a little bit about what is I2T ratings and uh, energy lit through, and uh, yeah, generally just a little review of what makes a fuse, and then we will of course also blow these up. So let's talk a little about the specifications of these fuses. We have the uh, little fuse, and we have the protester here. Now, and also a banana for scale. So if we look a bit on the data for these two fuses, I have marked up here the 300 amp fuse. It has a voltage drop of uh, 74 millivolts at 75% rated current. So this means this fuse has a um, heat dissipation of around 16 watt uh, when in uh, full operation. While the uh, bigger one here says at 200 amps, it has a power dissipation of 42 watts. And we will get back to why there is a difference between the heat dissipation between these two fuses. Now if we look at the I2T rating uh, for the DC fuse, it's at over 300,000 uh, I2T or ampere two seconds. This is the amount of energy let through, uh, which is also known as uh, Joule's heat. And Joule's heat is actually what just makes the fuse melt. It is ohmic uh, resistance um, and the amount of energy needed uh, to generate heat. So that's as, as simple as that. It is just pure resistive heat. Now, if we look at the pre-arcing I2T over here, it's just shy of 5000 um, ampere 2 seconds, and it has a clearing I2T at 24000, while it has over 300000. So this is actually also a fast-acting fuse, while this is a time-delayed fuse. So let's get them taken apart and uh, find out what the difference is. Okay, let's get the melting graphs out. Now, I also took uh, a good whack with a hammer to get this one out. Uh, had the uh, silicon sand inside um, actually molded to it, so uh, it was a bit hard to get out. Um, so I unfortunately broke the uh, the silver link, and I drilled out the rivets of the little fuse here. So I marked up some uh, parts of the uh, characteristic curves here. Uh, first, if we look at four times the current that these are rated for, so this would be 1200 amperes for the 300 unit and 800 amperes for the 200 ampere unit. We can see that this would um, melt out at 1.5 seconds, where this would melt at yeah, 0 0.08 uh, seconds or 80 milliseconds. But if we take 25 times that uh, current in the short circuit current or the rated current, so we come up to 8000 ampere for the DC fuse, it will still take it 10 milliseconds to, uh, to melt. But if we go up 25 fold for the large uh, fast uh, IGBT fuse here, uh, we get to 5000 ampere in the short circuit current, but we are also down to 0.2 milliseconds so that is way way faster and we can clearly see that in the construction of the fuse now it sits in a um, sand filled ceramic housing and this is because as we saw the 41 watt uh, dissipation that this fuse runs very hot when in um, use uh, because to be fast acting and when it is a melting fuse as anything else, it will have to run just on the brink of actually melting. So this is silver um, pieces, silver links. And as you can see, this is perforated uh, a lot of places. And this is to give a even um, break when the fuse melts, because silver has a very even um, 
distribution of uh, of heat and uh, current when so so when it breaks all these links will break simultaneously and it also has more sections to be sure to isolate the uh, voltage from uh, the two parts so there is no arc um, making a connection the sand will melt at the high temperature and it will actually insulate between these links now i also did a review of a high voltage fuse uh, i put a link for that in the description you should really check that out because that has a seriously special design for high voltage. Now if we look at the um, little DC fuse here, it's completely different. Now this is almost a solid piece of cover. There's a little hole in the middle, which seems to be filled with maybe tin, solder, something. But that is clearly a few square millimeters of raw cover. That is going to take some serious heat to melt. And that is also what we can see from the I2T rating. It requires a serious amount of energy before this cuts off. Please be advised that the sound level of the following video with the explosions is quite loud, so please turn down your volume. Now let's first take a look at the um, um, slow motion video that I recorded doing these explosions. These are recorded at 640 times 360 pixels at 4000 fps. Now I um, destroyed the video content on the high speed camera on the first video as we can see here. It is a doubled imposed or double exposure picture as so the camera simply just dumps the sensor data straight to the RAM. So uh, that means that it has overridden the first uh, two explosions with a third one. So I kind of destroyed my own recordings there. Now if we look at the second explosion, we can see it here and there is a quick clip back to uh, where we can see pieces of silver uh, going through the air. Now the, the whole black cloud we can see here is um, vaporized silver and that actually blocked for all light uh, in the explosion itself. So there is no recording of the arc um, destroying the, uh, the fuse element. Now let's get to the explosions. Right here is a 4 kilojoule capacitor bank. There is a uh, Pearson model 101 um, current monitor sitting down there and sitting down here. And I have my Rigel scope set on a single shot to capture the uh, current waveform. Then we can look a, a little bit up, uh, of the um, I2T times. Uh, I have the FPS 1000 high-speed camera set up and I also have my 5D Mark III camera set up uh, opposite of the phone that I'm showing you right now. Second shot it was, is with the current limited uh, 200 amp AC fuse. Retrying the uh, AC fuse uh, since the last high speed recording was uh, ruined. As you can see here, the damage to the 300 amp DC fuse is quite substantial. Copper is a really poor material when we have to do with arc flash uh, currents. So all the edges here and the um, pointy parts of this uh, fuse element is completely melted and all round now. Let's compare the result of the uh, two AC fuse explosions. This is the first one where I had ch chopped off the house with the silicium um, content, which is what really makes the um, current limiting fuse uh, able to stop a arc flash. As the silicium will melt due to the arc flash heat, uh, it will also isolate uh, the arc from developing further into a larger explosion. So now if we take a look at the fuse that was uh, tested while still in, in its house, we can see here that the silicium has melted and it has separated the 
silver fuse links for uh, for the arc to develop any further. Uh, I made a very um, long video going much more into detail how these um, current limiting fuses works in the high voltage fuses. So I put a link to that in the description and you should really check that out. This is an illustration of what happens when a uh, AC fast acting fuse um, reacts to a fault current. We have the uh, nominal AC current here. Then there is a fault occurrence here. Normally any uh, melting fuse or no fuse at all would reach a 2.3 times of the avail available RMS fault current. Now this 2.3 times is a standard agreed on as it can vary between 1.9 and 2.8 and industry is just kind of agreed that a average of that is good enough for the um, for the averaging of the maximum fault current. Now a fast acting fuse has to um, break up within less than half of the half cycle. So what a normal fast acting fuse would do was that the fuse element melts quite quite fast but as it is a high voltage AC fuse normally there will also be a arcing time which is predominantly uh, over the time period so the total clearing I2T uh, energy uh, is approximately one-fifth um, of melting energy and then Four fifths arcing energy, and this total amount or area under the graph here, that is what is the I two T, the amount of energy over time, ampere in times two seconds, and that is how you determine how much energy is let through. But and as you can see, it matters quite a lot because the area under this part of the graph is much 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 smaller than the total area you have over here under the big graph. So that is actually what I2T is. It is the amount of integrated energy from the current and time graph. The differences between DC and AC fuses um, has to be seen in the light of the current and voltage that they conduct and the kind of circuits that they protect. In an AC circuit, the AC voltage is alternating between positive and negative, so there will at any given time be a place where the AC voltage will cross down to zero and that will most likely distinguish the arc as there is nothing to drive the current anymore. So as we can see the fault current goes up on a fa fast acting link and it will diminish and it will go to zero as, once the, as the voltage goes to zero. But when we look at the fault current at a DC circuit, it will jump up fast, but then it will be very abrupt while it is arcing. And when it is finally arcing out, it will not diminish like this according to the AC circuit um, voltage, but it will more have a RC circuit decline. So that is why the arcing and melting time for a DC fuse is much, much longer. There is so much more energy or square area under the graph compared to the AC circuit. Some AC um, fuses can be used for DC. Uh, you will find a very extreme D rating on them. So what is a AC fuse meant for maybe 500 volt uh, AC can maybe only be used for 100 volt DC. And that is because the uh, I2T ratings for AC fuses is much lower than DC fuses. But you will most likely never find a DC fuse that can be used for AC. So be aware of that and always choose your fuse according to your application and circuit. Um, I primarily deal with inverter, inverters, high voltage inverters for Tesla coils and uh, switch mode power supplies. So uh, I included a link for a very good application guide down in the description. I think you should check it out if you... Um, just are curious about the fusing your um, switching power supplies and variables and such or if you want to learn some more it's a, a great guide from a, a fuse um, manufacturer called the Merson uh, and um, I think it's w worth a read 
So what are the reasons that we want to use current limiting fuses or current limiting uh, breakers? Well, originally we would just do it to protect these. This is in an 800 amp uh, ITPT brick. And this is rather expensive if you have to buy these from new or you have to replace a whole drive's uh, full breadth of these uh, if you blow them up from letting through too much um, energy at a um, short circuit fault. Now these can withstand a quite substantial amount of energy due to their thermal mass. But uh, if it is exceeded its rating, it's uh, usually in the data sheet that these are rated for uh, an X amount of uh, short circuit current for one millisecond. Well, then you just size your um, fast acting fuse to this. But in uh, recent times, we also have a banana for scale for this ITPT brick. Now, a more um, recent uh, approach I have seen in the industry is that we are moving from being in PPE category 3 to category 2 by installing um, current limiting fuses or breakers. But usually, if I had to go into some kind of breaker room uh, with typically 3 or 6 kilovolt uh, transformers, motors and breaker circuits for that, I would have been forced into varying category 3 or category 4 at worst due to the high arc uh, cal calories per square centimeter rating. But now with current limiting fuses, we are getting down in the categories and we are actually down to only wearing full um, flame retarded suit but with a helmet and visor and not these two bomb suits that's absolutely impossible to work in due to wear wearing um, two types of gloves and, and so on so it really also makes working easier and safer by making short circuit energies lower but also that you are wearing no more PPE than necessary to protect yourself but also that you are able to actually work from having the, the the minimum required PPE. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you like my videos, please subscribe to the channel, share the videos with your friends. And as a last question to you, the viewer, I would like to know, have you ever destroyed any lab equipment while doing experiments? Because I almost just destroyed my oscilloscope. And go. Ah. And that is where I kicked my oscilloscope to the ground. Gotta love these. Okay, seems okay. Yeah, probably fine.